are identified as the faculty for imparting the pharmacy education in open university of sri lanka since from 2020 and he is also the life member of the uh, number of professional bodies such as apti ipa igpi fip and he is the member of the syllabus review committee of the pg program of uh, which was being implemented by the pharmacy council of india and he was uh, he was the first coordinator of yam farm pharmacognosy yam farm in quality assurance and pharmaceutical regulatory affairs which is the brain field of dr b suresh who is the pro vice chancellor of jss uh, mahavidyapeet president of who is the president of pharmacy council of india hey bolo ke Uh, okay and uh, then uh, under the leadership of jss pharmacy college of pharmacy mysore has ranked there of 10th by nirf uh, mhrd india consultancy for fifth uh, uh, and now he has been nominated as a dean faculty of pharmacy uh, from 12th of september 2019 onwards and he is the chairman of the special interest group of 3d printing in healthcare and has procured 3d printing machines and works very closely with the discipline of engineers and the designers in jss with the and uh, recently he has created AR VR facility, augmented reality and virtual reality for the virtual imparting industrial training to the staff and students within the college setup. Actually, uh, with this uh, uh, introductory part of uh, introduction of uh, our today's uh, resource person, uh, Dr. Thomas sir, uh, I request to uh, again I on behalf of Sir Chandra Power College of Pharmacy, I welcome you, sir, uh, for this today's. Uh, Uh, webinar and uh, i welcome all the participants also for this webinar because uh, it is uh, one of the most important topics where uh, promoter has uh, uh, very expertise uh, in this subject so we are very eager to listen you sir uh, promoter towards you sir thank you uh, dr ganesh dama thank you uh, subarjit mantri for uh, the comparing and uh, first of all uh, i bring here the greetings from uh, jss college of pharmacy and jss academy of higher education and research and from our uh, vice chancellor and pro chancellor uh, we have been uh, driven by the visionary leadership here at the university we have our vice chancellor dr surinder singh who was ex dcgi and who was also the ex director of uh, national institute of biologicals which sets the standards for all the biological products across the country then we also have uh, dr b suresh was a founding principal and uh, uh, at ut then uh, later on uh, rose to the vice chancellor of uh, jss university which is right now called as jss academy of higher education and research so let me share the slides is my slide visible uh, doctor yes, yes sir yes, yes sir yes 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 sir okay. it is visible okay so can we start the presentation yes, yes sir sure 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 uh thank you uh, very much uh, doctor for giving me an opportunity and talk uh, this uh, wonderful topic which uh, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Pharmacy Council of India, and JSS AHR together put up in the last year, and it was very well received across the country. And lot of new insights also came up. And uh, Dr. B. Suresh gave a kickstart with a video clip out and how it fails in case if there is a, a not trained personnel in a pharmaceutical industry. Say. i would like to have a disclaimer here saying that uh, uh, whatever is been presented over here and the information that has been shared is of mine and not necessarily from hcr and also picture and videos are basically to make the things more clear and better we have stalwarts over here who are also uh, being a part of it 
I thank all the stalwarts for uh, being a part of it and guiding us and also blessing us to move in the right direction. And uh, thank you very much, uh, all the uh, professional uh, leaders. And um, we're, it is only an idea, and we have been following it. And uh, in JSS University, we had the concept of practice school under our university. So we had brought that uh, model initially. Then uh, later on, uh, uh, Pharmacy Council of India opened it up for the entire uh, country. Now, just if you look into what are the various lessons that we learned from COVID-19 since last year and this year, we are still reeling in the uh, effect of this uh, COVID-19. And uh, it has uh, drastically changed our personal and our professional life. And uh, more so even in the life science space also, there are a lot of remote locations, work from home concepts, offsite collaborations, lot of changes it has brought, redesigning our work, workplace and our workforce, and while meeting our individual needs as well. And what we want to emphasize here is, is our pharmacy talent pool is geared up to uh, all these uh, type of uh, pandemic? Are our students uh, trained for all these things? Because this particular uh, COVID pandemic has taught us a lot of different lessons lot of accelerated digital transformation has taken place because of which we are right now also we are engaging with our uh, stakeholders, our students and still continuing our uh, uh, classwork, lesson works and assignments, all those things. It is only possible because we have transformed ourselves. We have excelled ourselves as a teacher. We were very reluctant. We were very comfortable with the chalk and talk and immediately we took it up for the, the online teaching. And also this COVID-19 has brought in drastic change even in the drug development as well, which otherwise would have taken 8.2 years where uh, we could introduce uh, two vaccines within a uh, uh, say time period of less than a year. Last year we had a pandemic already, we have vaccines, indigenous vaccines, vaccines, uh, by uh, uh, Serum Institute, by uh, Bharat Biotech and all those things. And also moving also not on the physical clinical trials, but also on the virtual trials and remote monitoring is also the uh, current need because we are just getting adjusted to all the new normal. And the new normal, we all, as we know, that uh, we have a different redefined workplace and a lot of acceleration has taken space. And same is true even with the, the health sector, biopharm, and medtech companies as well. So we have learned a lot of new lessons, though it has uh, taken very, very expensive and the uh, whole country came to a halt. But even then, the pharmacy community, be it at the uh, counters, at the manufacturing, or at the education, have continuously been training the pool. And we never stopped, OK? so. And here, when we look at, proudly it is uh, uh, said by our Honorable uh, Prime Minister, India has been regarded as a pharmacy of the world. So right now, after COVID pandemic, even a layman also knows about uh, what is this uh, uh, importance of life science and what is the importance of remdesivir or what is the importance of vaccine, why they should take care of health and all. So health sector has become more important and India could cater to more than 123 partner countries and 59 non-aligned movement as well. And uh, uh, in the similar manner, the President of Pharmacy Council of India, whom we have as our uh, pro-chancellor, he always says that JSS Colleges of Pharmacy, Mysore and Uti are my laboratories for experimenting pharmacy education and research. We do a lot of experiments here, experience here. If we have any pitfalls, then we experiment, experience for ourselves, then whatever is good for the country, it is opened up for the entire country. So we always feel that uh, uh, we are uh, first to take up a lot of new initiatives in this uh, direction, thanks to all the visionary leadership that we have. And at the end of the presentation, what is expected here is, what is the talent pool that is available? And what is the pharma industry market size that uh, Recently, it has come up by the FIKI and uh, Ernst and Eng. They have come out with a report. Then, 
what are this advantage of pune why uh, being a, a pune resident why you should be so lucky to be there particularly in the field of pharmacy and what is the genesis why practice school differentiators case studies and uh, suggestive domains for practice school and challenges and what's in the store so if you look in here the indian skill report 2021 uh, recently been uh, released by vbox which says that more than 45.9% of graduates are employable or employable it means that uh, uh, they can be taken up for the job and uh, the shop floor compared to last time it was slightly more now it is uh, less and also the good news is the candidates from maharashtra tamil nadu uttar pradesh and karnataka are found with most of the employable talent again congratulations to maharashtra congratulations to sharad power college of pharmacy pune which you are making your state proud that the beat any graduates you are talent pool is certainly employable so again the another uh, uh, very interesting uh, recently it was also circulated among the principal group that indian pharmaceutical industry 2021 and future is now uh, released by piki and instant day they have come out with uh, the statement saying that uh, the present uh, turnover of 41.7 billion in 2020 they expect by 2030 it should be 130 billion it means that you have a huge market there is a huge demand for the talent pool in this particular sector and also we all know that india is the third largest global manufacturer of the drug and 14th in terms of value can we improvise the value number also to the better position this is only possible by the institutions giving out a wonderful students to the companies so that they can churn out big money and the value can be better now pune tite khai une all i understand that uh, pune has anything and everything that you re- that anyone requires this is what uh, is a marathi standard uh, saying and uh, why i say so is because you are very very lucky pune has this uh, pharma and life science sector and has seen a very significant growth you have a very good connectivity cosmopolitan populace and excellent skill human resource and renowned educational institutions you have some of the leading educational institutions and universities which are uh, having very good ranking and the other good part with the pune is you have world class research institutions like national institute of virology national aids research institution you have national center for uh, cell science and uh, cell sciences you have ncl pune iss uh, scr so all that i am trying to say here is you are really blessed to be in pune and uh, same thing is uh, true when we look at any different place india is blessed to have number of uh, uh, the, say national and international laboratories and also you have a good pool of uh, 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 industries, be it IT industry, be it pharma, be it life science industries, and all of them are open-minded. They want to work with anyone. Here is uh, Amitabh Bachchan of Pune or Amitabh Bachchan of uh, whole of India of uh, today. Other Pune wala, okay. And uh, his face is very familiar, and uh, he is the one who is uh, behind this COVID shield. and we have some connectivity with uh, this uh, uh, serum institute of uh, india as well because ours was a first private hospital which took up the covid shield clinical trial in jss hospital and we are very proud to say that our pharmd staff and students were a part of it and i am also happy to share that i was a volunteer for this covid shield vaccine i took my two doses as a part of uh, the clinical trial so uh, that is a, a good thing with uh, this uh, clinical uh, trial that was happening we right now have covaxin trial sputnik trial and also novax uh, clinical trials are also in the pipeline at uh, jss uh, hospital then why pune you have a wonderful film in, uh, in the television institute of india which has uh, given number of uh, uh, great film actors directors and all and if you look in here 
you have girish kasravalli is again from karnataka who is actually a b farm graduate from manipal he is a pharmacy graduate but turned out to be a, a director and uh, things like that so again you are very lucky you have amazing set of uh, it industries it has also become a it hub where all these companies do have a life science uh, wing attached to it and they are working in a symbiotic way and you have symbiosis uh, university and institution as well and you have armed force medical college military institute of technology what not you have number of institute because these are the days that we need to go ahead with the collaborations i cannot exist in silos i cannot just be for myself certainly i'll have to if i take one step whole of the world would be taking 10 steps to help us and see how it can be taken up so that's about uh, what pune is about and why we should uh, be blessed to be there and taking up all this activity and now coming back to the concept of practice school why we need to uh, have this concept as the world is evolving and uh, more so during covid and other things so is true even with the education sector also and the practical based learning is a one which gives more confident in an individual so that he has uh, experiential learning for him and it is not just going to stop at one point maybe he has got a job and that is it no he has to complete continuously pursue his education update himself upgrade himself without which he will be uh, not of any use in the industry or even in the academics as well so it is always expected that higher education follows this industrial based learning and uh, or practical based learning which would be the need of the art and that's the reason why they want to go for this uh, practice school concept and it is not just preparing for uh, 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 say one time and right from the beginning he would have gone through what is this uh, 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 education what should i be doing maybe even in our uh, interview process also we asked the first year students what do you want to do after four years after six years of your farm day so they need to have a clear picture ahead of them what they want to be and when the clarity is there they can be able to offer really good service and have a wonderful experiential learning and because of all these things they say that if you want to have an effective method of delivering a meaningful education to the student it is only by the practical based learning only so as a standard say goes here i hear i forget i see i remember and when i do i understand it better so certainly this is uh, uh, true in any uh, profession for that matter so is true even in the pharmacy profession as well and what are the various benefits that the students are going to get learning by doing because many times we i say we never forgot the cycling we never forgot the swimming what we have learned in our childhood days so is true uh, any thing that has been learned by doing you are going to learn remember it for lifetime and it is also giving them the all round development it is not just a, a rot memory or theoretical thing and uh, it also aids in career planning also once you are exposed to a particular uh, say set of experiments maybe that may create some sort of inquisitiveness in it to know more and more about that and you are will be uh, getting gaining an interest in that particular area then experience of a professional working condition also as a institution take uh, uh, say uh, better facilities expose to the students on par with the industry then they will be almost in the corporate world uh, even in the academic setup as well and there will not be a big uh, uh, say uh, surprise when the student from the academic setup goes from campus to the company because he would have already seen it in the campus and um, uh, we are very lucky that uh, in at jss uh, uh, some of the laboratories are on par or uh, maybe sometimes uh, better than uh, some of the uh, corporates as well so uh, uh, we are very happy to showcase you all those things and what are the various benefits that the student that the industry is going to derive study stream of a skilled manpower uh, and i am happy to share that uh, we had in fact 
trained we had a training session for uh, stride circle lab employees they were employed over there they said they don't have time for training so we had imparted training for those skilled uh, manpower and we uh, told them even for a, a industrial training institute uh, type of uh, uh, educated employee we told them what is the importance of pharmacy what is the importance of medicine then value addition and increased productivity is also there not much of the mistakes are being made when you have a trained manpower and a hrd also benefits human resource development you have a talented pool you don't need to break your heads on imparting further talent then employer branding also so that is also possible when you have the trained manpower then access to expertise from the academia meaning if at all you are good in your academics in your research facility and all you may also get a contact from the industry and they would be also happy to liaise with you for uh, any of the research activities that are uh, in the need of yeah and how is the colleges are going to or universities are going to benefit from this first and foremost thing is that we are going to bridge the gap between the industry and academia inputs uh, to quickly adapt curriculum to match the needs of the industry yes very recently the uh, pharmacy council of india has taken lot of uh, inputs from the various stakeholders and they have updated the syllabus and the syllabus sometimes we also feel that it is so vast in india we learn so many different uh, things okay but still we are it is almost being updated on par with any of the other uh, universities as well and also it gives a room for even faculty development say before we tell the student that you should have this skill and the other things and all our faculty should have open mindset so that they are also very well trained and opportunity for research and consultancy is possible and access to the industrial expertise and infrastructure and this is uh, very much true because uh, as a teacher i have many other assignments to be taken up and i would be blocked with a number of uh, activities so you have an industrial expertise a subject matter expert comes and talks of what is currently the requirement of an industry what is the current expectations by the industry he is going to share that with us so now which is unfortunate what are we right now say i talked about to show you pune what is pune all about how many national laboratories you have how many it companies you have i said we will have to work in collaboration i am an expertise in one area but uh, i may not be expert in all the different areas okay that is outside uh, the college but what happens within the college what are we now we are existing as a individual independent department where we work in silos where we work in so much of disconnect and it is very unfortunate but we are not supposed to work in this fashion if i take that broadly we have five departments these are the five departments that we have we work we do not interact we have uh, maybe at times i feel that we have created a virtual barriers between each department that we also question the integrity of a student when he or she um, uh, goes from one department to other can we not have the openness okay and with all due respect for the colleagues that we have here each one of them feel that their department and their subject is important because uh, i was lucky enough to be a part of a uh, uh, syllabus uh, framing committee of pharmacy council of india for the pg for quality assurance and regulatory and uh, when we got uh, the inputs from the various stakeholders and when we were discussing there they said no this is important why don't you include this in the first year second year they want all the subjects of all their special department to be put in all the years which can, which is just not possible so uh, it all depends on that but who is the end customer here is a student who are going to employ them is a pharmaceutical industry and we never uh, look at student interest we never look at what is a pharmaceutical industry expectation so we need to be Uh, very careful when we are designing the curriculum are we really there are we catering to the needs of the current industry requirement if i am uh, being there in my old school of thought of uh, 
having this uh, standard four or five uh, departments and stick on over there i don't think i am going to sell my products i am going to uh, uh, get the jobs for my student i need to go diversify myself and even in the campus interviews i was also a training and placement before i become a uh, took up as a principal here i was earlier working in the training and placement as a coordinator and uh, we had difficult time when uh, the companies come for a campus interview we have more than 15 to 20 companies coming here and uh, the student would openly say that i am comfortable only in the specialization i am in quality assurance you ask anything about quality assurance nothing about regulatory nothing about sotex so industry doesn't function like that okay so less knowledge about the other allied subject this is just not acceptable by the industry you need to have a fairly good knowledge about what you are uh, specialized in and also what is happening around you then how does an organize how does an industry work like say here in any pharma industry all the department revolve around a product or a service say i said that as a product of jss so all these different departments should work unitedly and then see how they can come out with the product if this model is being uh, followed and right now they have broken the barriers and uh, slowly each one of them are working some of the work starts from cognacy then go for uh, chemistry then get into preclinical then go for the formulation it has already been uh, put in practice at least couple of products and the project works we are able to drive here product or service becomes important and not the department let us all have that in the back of the mind and it is possible for us to bring this change and if you are going to bring such change you can certainly be or your students can certainly be on par with the pharmaceutical industry and let them not worry about which department they are belonging to certainly pci is going to ask but uh, they can uh, work beyond the uh, departments beyond their comfort zone they can work with this is a very important uh, realization that all of us uh, should have and uh, we should uh, forego some of uh, the, the thing that having a owners of a particular yes you need to have that belongingness should be there but certainly you should break the barrier okay let knowledge come from anywhere okay so we should be able to accept these things then can we adopt this industrial culture in the college as well yes it is possible and one of that uh, uh, has evolved uh, is a practice school which pharmacy council of india has thought of and uh, before designing this practice school lot of inputs were given and were uh, taken from the various stakeholders there were deliberations discussions even uh, we were also the contributors for uh, some of the preparing the skeletal part of it and all so it basically says that the practice school in uh, regulation 12 hours per week Uh, which is amounting to six credits and for the entire of the seventh semester it has to be for 150 hours and all either you can break down and have it for the entire uh, semester or it is at the comfort of the individual institutions you can plan accordingly because if some experiments are uh, uh, more then uh, maybe take a consuming lot of time you can have a uh, maybe a better uh, uh, planning of uh, yours and if you have 25 marks on a continuous mode and 125 on a uh, final uh, exam also for the practice school and just to have a differentiators what is the difference between uh, practical classes and practice school and uh, say practical classes student learn concept individually maybe chapter wise and all there would be a total disconnect say when we start our uh, say i am from a pharmaceutics and when we start uh, uh, talking about some formulation syrups tinctures alexas and all we really don't connect uh, that to the present world okay so that is what is uh, missing link over there whereas in the practice school we will try to go for a complete life cycle of a product if i start from the granulation i should be doing till packing and stability study that is what i expect from the practice school and here it is a staggered learning here in case of practice school it is more of an integrated learning then students learn within the prescribed uh, curriculum and uh, uh, we should thank uh, again pharmacy council of india that uh, they have not restricted the boundaries they are not given the boundaries uh, where you will have to draw the line and you will have to work within that framework no 
no boundaries holistic learning can, is possible you can think of anything that is going to add value to your student as well as to the company at large and limited to curriculum and uh, learning based on the latest uh, technologies have to be imparted and large group of uh, students normally are being uh, groomed here and uh, here it's a small group for learning and focused learning would be possible with the practice school again there is a small confusion were between the practice school and the project work as well say uh, practice school and even before practice school there is also industrial training which the pharmacy council of india says it as desirable for 150 hours and all so here i'm just trying to differentiate between the practice school and the project work uh, yes uh, it, it is there in the seventh semester practice school and in the eighth semester we have a project work that the group project has to be taken up and uh, uh, though there is uh, no demarcation between what should be the project work in the practice school and what should be the project work practice project work should be taken from one of the electives that is fine okay but my sincere request for you is just because of our convenience and comfort let the topic that is selected for the project work be different from that of the practice school even broadly if it is from the same uh, elective let the topic be different let the topic be different so the student or the can, uh, student will have a merit of uh, studying two different uh, topics of the same electives or two different electives altogether that is my sincere request because students are very very clever they are uh, born with the mobile phones they have at most they have lot of access to the information so i would uh, feel that give them an opportunity they'll be eager to learn okay you have an uh, evaluation pattern is uh, practice school is uh, internal whereas project work you have an internal and external uh, evaluation appointed by the university you need to submit the report on both the cases uh, not less than uh, 25 pages and in a triplicate and here it's a small group but here it is a group project not more than a five students in a group in a group project here individually you'll be submitting so this way it is a, there is a differentiator and um, there are a lot of planning that can be done uh, say depending on the institution and the availability of the equipment instrument and things like that and uh, uh, we have just taken a small case study how we all uh, uh, developed here at uh, jss we set a clear objective why this practice school has to be uh, uh, brought into then we had uh, clear expectations and the knowledge as a learning outcomes and also we scheduled the scheduling how the department should be involved and what is the evaluation uh, of the uh, reports and feedback as well and uh, initially initial planning was something like this uh, which i shared uh, last year also that we wanted to have all the five departments to be roped in and uh, divided the students in five different groups of uh, 15 each and then uh, we revolved around it and all and then uh, we also took the feedback and also we started uh, making some uh, different uh, uh, plans which otherwise they would not be learning in a regular uh, practicals or they would be not using those equipments for example uh, they may not be using microwave synthesizer at the level of uh, bfa they may not be using rapid mixer granulator extrusion spheronizer in the uh, bfa so we wanted them to introduce uh, all these concept and then see how they are going to get uh, uh, involved and if you look in here keenly over a period of time yeah, initially if you look at the last slide we have taken all the uh, five departments of uh, that we had here and here when we look in here we have uh, chemistry we have uh, some um, uh, sotics these are the things that were there earlier even uh, pharmacology was there and they later on said uh, no we want only in this uh, specialty and uh, they were grouped under uh, uh, that particular uh, departments only then once we have uh, did all this exercise we also took a feedback from the students as to what was their experience where we need to improve ourselves and how to go about so when we took up uh, the feedback almost uh, more than uh, uh, 55% of them were saying it was good the experience was good and uh, they said uh, it can be further improved as well 
it was not excellent but certainly it was a good experience and what we made the rule at jss is no repetition of the regular experiments as a part of practice course just because uh, there is a curriculum there is an experiment you just repeat i'll give you uh, the same uh, uh, experiment and you will have to function no it is not possible expose the student to the equipments and instruments so that they have not handled i said uh, rmg uh, then a bd a bp cad packing a packaging equipment we can certainly uh, have them work on all these machines which are available which were which are available because we made them uh, to do that i don't say that uh, all the colleges should have this and they have to follow the same no whatever the equipment that you have please give the complete product life cycle of that particular equipment and the process of the product so that they know from start to end how the product comes out so that is the understanding how we would uh, how uh, it was uh, being uh, developed at uh, jss even as a part of practice school we also ask them to work on all these different machines and each one of them they know what are the process variables how they should uh, what are the operation conditions all those things are they were aware of at the end of the uh, practice school and what is the major advantage for the students here it basically uh, kindles the interest in the student to choose their specialization for their higher studies be it in india be it abroad they would start uh, getting an interest in a particular uh, subject okay hey and i am good at animal handling maybe i think i should be going for pharmacology i'm good at cat so maybe chemistry or analysis something of that sort then even realizing the importance of each department unfortunately uh, what has happened among the student community is they say that okay there are certain programs of mpharm which have high demand there are other programs we do not have demand but i always say that there is a demand for every program that you are undergoing provided you are groomed properly provided you have taken a lot of interest in understanding the fundamentals of it and putting it in the right spirit and you can also the students can also answer interviews very confidently without giving any room for uh, be not being uh, selected and also get hands on experience for whole of his lifetime he would have remembered how did he operate on tablet coating on made on uh, maybe tablet making maybe on the packaging machine and things like that and we can have a ready pool industry ready for pharma 4.0 because already industry 4.0 is there and uh, we'll have to have a pool of students who are ready uh, for the next maybe we are on 2021 even if a b pharm student join we should have uh, made him ready for 2025 if it is a farm day 2027 the student is going to come out then i should be teaching him training him and all the skill sets what is going to come in 2027 as a teacher am i aware of it that is what we'll have to introspect ourselves and these are the suggestive uh, domains that we can think of uh, these are not uh, given in um, uh, the current uh, in pharmacy a council of india uh, regulations also these are the domains which is uh, more or less of the same electives what we have and these are the specializations what we can think of like phytomedicine cad formulation science pd printing analytical method development regulatory science iprs patents clinical trials pharmacy administration all these different uh, domains we can take it up and whatever the specialty that is available in the college we should be able to offer Uh, to the students so that our students are uh, uh, will have a latest knowledge and would be able to face the interviews of the companies uh, very well and we uh, are uh, of the opinion that the students should not restrict themselves for the specialization which they come from they should go and think out of the box how can we integrate the current learning with uh, artificial intelligence machine learning big data data analytics and robotics in all the above domains already there are around 8 to 10 phd scholars who are working in a integrated subject at jss uh, university where we are working on ai uh, 
uh, marrying AI uh, knowledge with uh, that of uh, the hospital management. So that way we are working, and uh, this is the need of the hour. And um, uh, Amazon uh, Academy, AWS Academy also gives a lot of cloud computing and other courses. Now it is very much important that we should be able to start with all these uh, new jargons. It is not just limited only for the engineering graduates. Even as a pharmacy graduate, you should be able to know all these things. You should be able to at least have a fairly good knowledge about this so that your uh, openings would be plenty. Because a lot of IT industries have life science wing where they want all these different uh, information uh, for, uh, that should be acquired by the students. And it, it cannot be given in an institution and in a four year framework and all. The student should also take active participation and then go ahead with the, uh, acquiring this additional knowledge. And uh, main focus should be on hands on experience on the equipment and instruments, whatever the instrument that you have, and also understanding of the complete stages of the uh, maybe formulation development or maybe of the uh, pre formulation studies, or maybe it can be the preclinical studies. How uh, right from applying for uh, the uh, animal ethics committee, procuring the animals, animal studies, discarding them, and uh, taking care of the used animals if they are alive. All these things has to be done in one step so that they get fairly good knowledge. I just explained to you how it all works. Uh, this every one of us know, starting from dispensing to have a, coming to the 10th step of uh, stability studies how you can integrate all these learning has to be completed. Otherwise, it is, uh, it, it is halfway through. The understanding is uh, not better, okay? So we'll have to integrate all this knowledge. And what are the various uh, challenges? The current challenge what we have is COVID pandemic where the whole country has come to a halt. Can we still work? Can we still impart the knowledge? Yes, online it is possible. Now. Uh, even uh, as a part of uh, the learning, even the colleges also should adopt and Pharmacy Council of India has already come out with a lot of uh, new initiatives and they are also signing uh, uh, signed an MOU with LSSDC, Life Science Skill Development Council also. Then ERVR uh, technology can also be used. A lot of simulation experiments uh, can be done. And here, here we are facility. I'm very happy to share with you that our uh, university was kind enough to give us uh, augmented reality and virtual reality facility. Uh, last year, when we made that uh, presentation with uh, Simulanis, uh, Raman Talwar, who is the uh, founder CEO of uh, uh, Simulanis, uh, we talked to him and uh, uh, we negotiated. And uh, today I have uh, two sets of uh, AR, VR. It is uh, seeing is believing, particularly when we have this uh, type of uh, probes, it is something like a joystick where you can feel that whole industry is in front of you. I have experienced myself, I have experienced, experienced FBD, coating, drying, everything is in front of me when I'm uh, with the augmented and virtual reality. And now we want to make it a very big uh, event, take all the uh, students through this phase, right from diploma to M farm, we want them to experience because maybe more than me, it is the students who would love to do that because they need not go anywhere in the auditorium. They can have a feel of the pharma industry in front of them. So these trainings are becoming very, very important. And uh, uh, I would also like to say here is we have a state of the art uh, simulation, skill and simulation lab, even in our medical college. Uh, medical college for uh, training all the different aspects of the uh, medical treatment and all. Uh, the university has spent more than 22 crores in setting up uh, the, the skill and simulation lab in the JSS hospital. Even we, I have also undergone the training. All our teaching and non-teaching staff, including our drivers, cooks, every one of us have undergone the training on BLS and ACLS. That is basic life support and advanced cardiac life support. We have undergone the training. So what we felt was, even if one life is saved in case of emergency, all of the money that we have spent on the training uh, has uh, been refunded. That is what we always feel, that uh, it is very important that uh, uh, we have to have the 
uh, practical training. If not, at least this uh, simulation labs should be there. We also have a simulated uh, uh, pharmacy counter also in the uh, uh, class here, in the college here. And what are the various initiatives that uh, uh, Pharmacy Council of India has taken? Uh, seven, eight years back, uh, maybe in one of the discussion with uh, one of my colleagues from uh, Belgaum, we were uh, uh, going on a PCA inspection on the way to uh, Hyderabad. We were traveling by car and uh, whole of the time we only discussed about how we can uh, improve the, uh, the pharmacy profession. And as an outcome of that discussion, he said, uh, the pharmacy teachers need to be trained. I said, I brought this idea and told my then principal, Dr. Papa Sarati, he said, you brought this idea, better you go for the training first. I said, fine. I was a HOD of uh, pharmaceutics. I, uh, I got uh, the permission to for one week training in Unichem Goa. Myself and one of my colleagues, we went, I'm telling you, it is a lifetime experience for me for one week where we stood in the industry from, six, uh, from uh, 9 a.m. in the morning till 6. We understood so much. We have, I have so much of uh, knowledge about working of an industry that we learned a lot of new things. It was uh, a real life-changing experience for us. Now, maybe uh, the similar initiative is also being taken up by PCI, where they want to train the teaching staff and they have come out with a scheme called as Capacity Building Industrial Training, CBIT, which has been circulated, which is in the um, uh, uh, which is in the PCI website also. This is program is exclusively for the pharmacy teachers who want to upgrade their knowledge in the industry. And uh, that knowledge can be uh, translated to the students so that they are very well equipped, very well informed. And even uh, uh, they would be also supported monetary also. PCI is going to support the tune, I think about uh, 50,000 rupees for one month of training. So I think it is a very good initiative that uh, Pharmacy Council of India has come out with. Let us all take this as an advantage, identify one of uh, maybe uh, the faculty in our institution, uh, uh, support him and uh, let the uh, pharma company uh, uh, give him the very good training so that he can come back and uh, share his experience among our colleagues and uh, students so that the students are very knowledgeable. Um, one of the important thing that I saw in uh, Unicam uh, Goa was about the ASRS system, because this is not being there in our Leon Latchman or our uh, current uh, books that we uh, prescribe for the students, because we still know all the storage system and all as a, a traffic signal only, like uh, red, yellow, green. Red is uh, uh, say material that is rejected. Yellow is under uh, quarantine. Green can be uh, moved to the dispensing area. But gone are the days. It is automatic storage and retrieval system. And uh, uh, the companies like Godrej have uh, put up those type of machines over there. We only know BCS classification. There is already DCS classifications also, developability uh, classification system. We talked about uh, earlier about quality control, now quality assurance, now it is about quality maturity, okay? And now quality matrix, whatnot. So as a teacher, we need to be very well being informed. We should be knowing what is the latest that is happening in the pharma world. We should be more excited. We should be more proactive. I always put myself first. If I know, maybe my colleagues would know. If my colleagues know, my students would also be aware of it. So certainly I feel, I am of the opinion that this is going to be a game changer provided we really use it, not for the sake of uh, PCI or for any uh, regulatory body. Let us do it with uh, uh, complete dedication with whatever the facility that is available in the college. Instead of uh, just keeping it idle, if we are going to make use of them and train them, there are a number of uh, colleges which are doing amazing work. Amazing work. Even they are uh, offering some small time training uh, program and end of the training, they also give the certificate that he or she is certified uh, in operating HPLC, in operating gas chromatography, in operating HPTLC. So like that they are doing. 
and uh, one is you are training a, a, a skilled manpower you are giving a skilled manpower to the company so it is a very good part of uh, it and a important responsibility of ours also uh, with that i thank you uh, i think i am uh, on dot with uh, one hour it is 458 uh damasar yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah i just want uh, to share uh, one more uh, information which was uh, uh, in fact available it was yes, sir. Uh, well, sure sir sure uh, that is uh, let me try to share that information as well say uh, this is a skill uh, skill report which i was talking about this is a wonderful uh, report that is uh, developed by uh, vbox india skill okay. report uh, 2021 i wish that all of our colleagues should go through all these things and vbox even uh, works with a number of uh, uh, colleges also they would help you to find out which is a talent pool they have also talked about here like what percentage of uh, people are uh, employable and uh, because of covid pandemic how the things have changed so beautifully it has been put up even i wanted to show you if uh, uh, if you permit that uh, Uh, Maharashtra students from Maharashtra are employable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you see here they also say here MBA, BCom, BA, and BPharm candidates uh, are considered next to the uh, BTech and MBA. This is a line which I have quoted here. I have taken from this. Uh, yeah. Candidates uh -huh. from Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, and Karnataka are found to be the most of the employable talent. So certainly oh. congratulations for all of you. You are yeah. good job. Please do great job. Okay. Yeah. It is not just enough for us to push, but it is uh, very important for us to lead from it the. Is, it is a it is a booster. The slide you are yeah. showing it is a booster for the students again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, let me stop this sharing. Let me share okay. one more document for the benefit sure, of sure. other uh, friends. Uh, no this is uh, i'm getting the same thing just one second just give me one moment yeah i'll i'll come back to you just one second yes this is there okay now uh, yeah. uh hmm. can you just give me one minute sir yeah yeah yes sir yes sir yeah i thought maybe if it is uh, good with you uh, yeah yeah this is the latest document that was uh, in the pharmaceutical industry 2021 which is being shared here and it has lot of very good information which is uh, very relevant for all our pharmacy teachers and we should be uh, knowing all these things and also we should ask our students also to go through these things and what are the key drivers and where we need to be and what is the way ahead of us so very beautifully being made the soft copy is available in the group even if you want i can share with dama sir and further it can yeah, be yeah. shared yes yeah, sir okay sure sir so yes sir yes uh, my uh, uh, small information that i have gathered and um, <laughs> thank you very much for giving me an opportunity and you all are doing very good job and uh, we want you to do much greater we have all some words for guiding us and uh, actually we have got the you are uh, you are we are being uh, very lucky to have the uh, resource person like you for uh, such type of the session or for to talk about uh, such type of the topic actually sir we are very thankful sir <laughs>
Uh, yes, uh, shall we have a, because a few of the participants they have raised their hands and uh, the question they are in mind. Shall we take it, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, now we'll start the uh, questionnaire session with uh, some few participants. Uh, first one is Dr. Santos. First one is Dr. Santos. Please, you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, yes, sir. I'm audible, sir. Yes, Santos. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Before uh, putting up my question, uh, I would really like to thank uh, Dr. Dama sir and his team for organizing this uh, informative webinar. Uh, thank you, sir, for, for your lucid presentation. Uh, sir, one of your slides, it was focusing on augmented reality and virtual reality. Sir, can you share some details on that uh, regarding that uh, vendors? Uh, who are actually into that practice? I'll uh, uh, I'll be sharing the uh, vendor details to Dr. Uh, Ganesh Dama. You can collect it. He is uh, Raman Talwar from uh, Similanes. The company is located in uh, Noida, Delhi. And uh, I can also share his uh, number as well. If you Google out okay. uh, Similanes, uh, you can get it. And uh, even I, I don't mind even sharing the cost of it for two sets and uh, one uh, single software and two sets of joystick and the headgear and all those things. It costed us around uh, 6.5 lakhs, 6.5 lakhs. And uh, you have uh, almost uh, 21 modules in that, 21 modules in the sense you have a uh, uh, coating machine, FBD, dryer, then many different modules are available. Okay. Have I yeah. answered your uh, question, Dr. Santosh, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Thanks you a lot, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir. Uh, sir, we have another one next participant, Dibyam Purohit. Uh, Dibyam Purohit, please, you can ask your question, please. Dibyam Purohit. Sir, my question is that can we implement higher education's practical practice concept to undergraduate students? As we know that today, few students are interested in higher studies. Sir, how can we emphasize or develop our current learning techniques to highly specialized practical skills? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Purohit, sir, uh, it is certainly uh, possible. Uh, what I always uh, uh, said, I also again reiterate that we need to be, as a teacher, we need to be excited. And everything is possible. If you go to Burj Khalifa, the king has written very clearly over there that the word impossible is not there in his dictionary. Okay, so it is possible. And I basically believe that it is in the mindset that it is certainly possible without which we would not have achieved so much of uh, uh, name and uh, fame. And also, yes, there are some hiccups, but certainly it is achievable. We can motivate the students for higher education and more specialized area. And uh, for God's sake, I request all my pharmacy professionals that do not ask the student to find his future only in, uh, say, quality assurance, in the production, in the pharma companies. You have number of other companies. Life science companies are there. You have IT sectors are there. Please go beyond, think out of the box. You have medical device companies are there. You are much better uh, informed than the other uh, people. You know about the uh, regulations. You know, medicine, so you should be going for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so thank you. And the next, uh, next participant is Ganesh. Ganesh, sir, you can ask your question, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, thank you for the nice presentation, actually. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, see, uh, in the practice school, uh, what we are doing is uh, we have to uh, teach the student uh, from the starting to end. What is the process? Right. right. And uh, in the uh, project also, we actually, in fact, do the same thing. From the starting to end, we just let the student know that uh, uh, what is the starting point and what should be the end point? So how we should differentiate between the practice school and the project work? Yeah, uh, certainly it is a, a bit uh, uh, puzzling type of question. 
and what i can say here is with the advantage or benefit of uh, practice uh, school and uh, the project work i wish and hope that you should be making the student at That's least nice. take two different uh, concepts two different aspects if he has uh, worked on uh, uh, say uh, working on a project on uh, vigilance he should be doing it on regulatory science maybe if he has worked on quality assurance he should be doing it on uh, uh, some cat designing so that at least he fairly has uh, two different uh, aspects that is available with him but there is no demarcation as such that uh, this is what you will have to deal with the, as a part of practice school and we know as a teachers we know we have undergone the mpharm and the phd and all those things so project work how does it all go about so practice school certainly we will have to uh, again reinvent ourselves and uh, see what can be a good learning and uh, please venture into the areas which are um uh, unheard of and so that you will also start to working towards it because i never knew about this ar vr and slowly we started making noise and today there are five of our students who are working on uh, uh, ai integrated projects ai integrated projects in uh, pharmacy practice we are working and uh, uh, even in hospital administration we are working in that uh, ai projects and we have already signed uh, two mous as well okay that is a beauty that uh, you start making noise now maybe 5 years down the line the pool of uh, new generation uh, pharmacy students will be created yeah thank you thank you ganesh sir sir uh, with the last uh, uh, last participant not participants uh, he is a legend for us uh, dr prakash divan sir sir kindly say some few points sir <laughs> Uh, good evening to all of you. Yes, First of all, I would like to congratulate Ganesh Dama and his team for making it possible to really refine and define what the pharmacy profession is. Because I have been regularly attending this. I think this is my second one. And I'm really impressed upon. And today, the choice of a team is excellent where uh, Professor Pramod Kumar is has delivered a lecture which i don't call it lecture it is a practical thing which you would like to talk about and in my mind i could get something after listening to him i felt every attempt has been made but the quality of the students the quality of the teacher which they are coming out i think still require fine tuning and for that i think we should have fdb programs that is the faculty development programs otherwise we are living in a watertight compartments oh it is my college it is my institute it is my things instead of coming out because the pc has really made the difference having the same syllabus for the whole country what a great achievement i should definitely congratulate my good friend dr suresh who has been at the helm of affairs and he has done a wonderful job i think uh, pramod kumar pramod uh, kumar please convey my regards to dr suresh who i know in last 40 years now and uh, in that situation what i feel is like uh, national accreditation board nabl where every time they will have some program for all the people i know it is going to be a, a human task for the pharmacy council of india but at the same time initial beginning can be done where the training which is given practical training should be given which is given to be to the people will also will be the same that means the pattern is going to remain same that means you are trying to churn our front whether it is from mysore whether it is from delhi or whether from bombay i think the outcome of our students should be of a great sense because hope all of you agree with me as a pharmacy we have not made a dent as a professionals we ourselves think that we are a pharmacist but how much effort has to be made to see that the pharmacy profession has to be recognized and it should be unavoidable for any person who is talking on medicines i think with this i really feel the way uh, pramod kumar has put the things which is definitely encouraging for the students and also for the faculty members and i feel that such programs 
are going to be the key for many of the professionals who can excel very well in the situations. So with this, I definitely thanks for the team uh, for giving me an opportunity to talk to you. And today I fully believe that learning doesn't have a full stop. It continues as long as we should want to hear many things. So pre uh, probably please do not mistake me why I attend this uh, these things webinars. The reason is there is every person has something which you can give it. And today I was very happy to listen to Pramod Kumar. I thank all of you and not only the team of uh, Ganesh Dama and the management who are proactive as far as pharmacy profession is concerned. Thank you very much. I thank you everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your valuable talk with well, us. I'll sir. convey your regards to Dr. Suresh, sir. I'll certainly convey it. And it was you, uh, when you were uh, the director of IACT, where you brought a lot of limelight and the Department of Pharmacology and all was really uh, at the great heights and a lot of uh, uh, research, innovations all came up over there. We still follow all your research papers from that time as well. And um, um, all of you guys be um, uh, in uh, um, Pune and in Maharashtra, you are very lucky that you have number of uh, opportunities, number of pharma companies, number of ITs. Uh, just to take, I, I tell you, just take one step. The company would take 10 steps to help you out. You. I'll have to move out of my comfort zone. I'll have to come out of my chamber. Then you see so beautiful the world is. I think we should be able to really do that and encourage, say, uh, let us not uh, be blocked with only, okay, that is all secondary. Okay, we have accepted ourselves. Whatever is a salary, we have accepted. Okay, and let us say, being a teacher, being in the teaching professional is a noblest thing that we all can be very proud of. Today, I can proudly say that we have more than 30, 35 of our alumni own their own companies. And all of them are just at one phone call away for me. Anything I want, be it the job, be it a sample for analysis, be it any connectivity, they are just uh, at one phone call away for us. So that is the beauty that we all have here. And maybe all many different institutions have such wonderful uh, alumni pool. And alumni is again a major strength. How Harvard, um, uh, this uh, uh, MIT and all have grown is only because of their alumni. Our own uh, uh, Mahindra, Mahindra group, Anand Mahindra, is also alumni of uh, uh, Harvard and all. He has donated uh, huge money. Okay, so certainly everyone would be would love to do that. Only thing is that have I asked my alumni? Is as simple as that. Otherwise, uh, they would be they would love to do it for the alma mater. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so now I request to Dr. Sumit Asak Joshi. Uh, to summarize this today's session and kindly conclude it. Sir, Sumit sir, please over to you. Thank you, Dr. Mantri sir. It is indeed my pleasure to summarize the content of such a wonderful and knowledgeable session on understanding and implementation of Pharmacy Practice School. Before summarizing, I would like to thank our today's speaker, respected Dr. Pramod sir, for accepting our invitation and sparing their valuable time for us. Thank you, sir. First of all, we we'll congratulate you, sir, for your contribution as a volunteer for a COVID-19 vaccine. As a frontline worker and as a pharmacist, you had contributed as a volunteer for the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you, sir. You had briefly touched all the aspects of today's subject and your expertise in this field and way of explaining has made the session easy to understand all the stakeholders and all the participants. As it is newly introduced in our Pune University, sir, for this year, from this year onwards, we are going to introduce for the pharmacy practice, practice school as per the syllabus of PCI. The faculty members are also not much familiar with the topic of pharmacy practice school Sir, your guidance will truly become path light for us for uh, following all the concept what you had shared as like you compared what are the conventional 
practical aspects and what are the uniqueness with the pharmacy practice school what are the importance for the students regarding the practice school what are the importance for the industries academics as well as universities sir you had explained all the concept very well what is importance with the pharmacy practice school and whatever you have shared your views on the concept of pharmacy practice school very well and all of them understood and uh, i assure you that on behalf of all the participant and our uh, organizing team that definitely what are the concepts you shared in your today's presentation definitely we all follow as a footlight for our upcoming days for implementing and uh, we can say that betterment for the students thank you sir i would like to extend my thank to our below principal sir dr dama sir for taking initiation and encourage us to arrange such type of webinar which will be beneficial for all the stakeholder as well as our attendees so thank you for your we can say that present today's presentation i request our below principal sir to please share the today's virtual certificate to our speaker sir i hand over charge to the principal sir please sir hello sir pravin sir <laughs> actually this is a certificate for you uh, it's actually uh, our honor that um, we are giving to you the such type of the certificate from our institute actually it is a um, very great thing that um, under the um, uh, name of sharachandra power college of pharmacy today you have uh, shared your views about the practice school and i think that uh, every Uh, whatever the concept whatever the aspect whatever the importance that you have been shown through your presentation it will be bring uh, much more useful uh, to get it implemented by the faculty members of the uh, whatever the uh, that are uh, present in pune university at present uh, th those who are entering for this subject actually and uh, all over india actually this was been implemented for uh, at the beginning uh, already one year one year there it has been completed but for this year it is new for us and i think it will be the that will be the fruitful session for all the participants and on behalf of all these participants i extend my uh, gratitude and i extend my thanks uh, thankful uh, to you pramod sir thank you sir thank you very much for this today's session and thank you for spending your valuable time with us sir thank you very much and uh, i again once again uh, uh, give you open invitation that any time if there are any questions or any queries please reach it reach out to us i don't say sure, that sir. experts certainly whatever little help that is possible will be able to extend no no this is this uh, today today it was a very great help for us actually yeah. this year, this was a very great <laughs> yeah please uh, also uh, when you are traveling down south please visit sure. uh, mysore is a beautiful sure. place we have sure, sure. uh, 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 guest here We yes yes uh, wonderful places to visit like pune we have also very beautiful places here in and around yeah. even even we are, even i am also inviting you to pune also whenever you come to pune you come to our, uh, come to my place yes, hey, just you, you make a call for me i will be there with you <laughs> thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you very much sir thank okay, you everyone thank you yes sir thank you thank you participants thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you sir So we will do the meeting. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Not to host. Did they get it? Did they? Hmm.